Thank you very much for having me here to present on these evaluations on behalf of everybody who, who took part in them. So I'm actually going to talk about two different programmes in two very different settings. Um, so there's a lot to get through, but I'm happy to clarify at the end. So we're talking about the integration of non-communable disease care in the Democratic Republic of Congo and in Swaziland, the MSF experience. So as I said, these are two very different settings. We're talking about outpatient diabetes care in a hospital in Weso, in North Kivu, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and then broader NCD care delivered in an outpatient setting within outpatient and HIV services in Matsapa in Swaziland. So very little is known about delivering non-communicable disease care in humanitarian settings and still less about integrating this care into pre-existing structures. So MSF um, decided to evaluate both programmes in collaboration with the London School of Hygiene. And the main objectives of these evaluations were to try to understand the programme effectiveness, to look at some of the factors influencing treatment outcomes. And in the DRC, this involved um, the effect of conflict and um, heightened insecurity on treatment outcomes. And we also looked at programme costs for each programme from the provider perspective. So just to underline the differences in the two settings, on the left you see a map of the DRC and in the circle is the province of North Kivu. So it's an unstable chronic conflict setting with repeated displacement of the population. And on the right you see the map of Swaziland, which you've seen already today. And this study was based in Matsafa and it's a, as we said earlier, it's a high, in, high HIV prevalence, high TB prevalence resource con constrained setting. Also, the programs were quite different in each place. In the DRC, it was nurse-led outpatient care in a hospital setting. Um, <coughs> nurses provided most of the care with doctors reviewing at enrollment and on a six-monthly basis. And nutrition support, psychosocial support were integrated into the program. Whereas in Swaziland, um, this was broader NCD care delivered within a primary care level outpatient and HIV service. Um, nurses reviewed the stable patients, doctors reviewed those that were unstable and patients on enrollment. And in contrast, there was no specific adherence or psychosocial support um, integrated into the program. So to describe the methods from WESO, there was a retrospective analysis of the routine cohort data done on all enrolled patients from the beginning of the service in January 2014 until February 2017. And we also analysed the relationship of the clinical outcomes with different time periods within the programme, which were defined by programmatic changes or contextual changes that were related to heightened insecurity. And as I said, we did a costing analysis from the provider perspective um, for 2014 and 2015. And then in Swaziland, again, we did a retrospective analysis of the routine cohort data for a one-year period from July 2016 to June 2017. In addition, uh, routine patient exit surveys were done. The team did some regression modeling looking at predictors of outcomes, um, clinical outcomes, and we also did this um, costing analysis from the provider perspective, looking at annual uh, total and the unit costs. So from WESO, back to the DRC, um, to pull out from this slide, we had 243 diabetic patients enrolled. Um, you'll notice in bold that almost a third of the adult cohort was underweight. Um, also, this, the alcohol, so self-reported recent alcohol intake at enrollment was relatively high at 22.8% compared to what we know about um, self-reported alcohol levels in the region. Um, the fact that many of the patients were underweight might explain what's happening in the pie chart on the right, where almost a quarter, the portion in, bray, in gray, were um, not classified into type one or type two diabetic patients by the staff. And this could be because there is um, a reported phenotype of diabetes related to malnutrition in sub-Saharan Africa, where patients have a non-ketotic hyperglycemia, so very high glucose levels, and um, they have high insulin requirements, um, and they're often young and malnourished or underweight so it, it doesn't fit neatly into a type 1 or type 2 diagnosis. Now, this is a very um, complex looking graph, but I'll explain um, what was done. So we divided the time period into 
six different sections which were related to training that happened in the programme, um, suspension of service when there was heightened insecurity, and um, the next suspend two in green means that the drug supply actually ran out, and then there was a gradual return in service. So what the graph represents is actually the delay in attendance at appointment. So on the y-axis you have the number of days after the appointment time that the person actually um, arrived for their visit. And on the x-axis you have each month of the program. So each bar represents the average um, for the month. And um, the, the low bars um, between the red and the green lines um, represent the fact that there were actually, there was a, a short delay, people were not quite late for their appointment, um, whereas during the return period, the high bars after the dark blue line, they represent the fact that there was a long delay, so people were arriving up to a month late for their appointment, so clearly they were unable to reach the clinic during the heightened insecurity, and that's the circle. Um, so again, this is a complex graph, but I'll try um, to pick out the most important points. We, again, we're looking at these same program periods, um, and what we're looking at here is the clinical outcomes, so blood pressure and glycemic control and how they related to these different periods. And we have on the y-axis um, the proportion of visits that were considered controlled, and on the, um, the x-axis, again, it's the, the month of each program. And we stratified the patients by whether or not they were on insulin. So the key messages really are that control was fairly consistent. There was just a modest deterioration in disease control during the period of interrupted service, and that mainly happened after the drug supply was exhausted. And the, the lowest line at the bottom in black, that represents the blood sugar control in diabetics taking insulin. So overall, they were less well controlled, and they had a fairly stark dip during the period of um, interrupted service. Okay, so now over to Swaziland for some of the results there. So this was a much bigger cohort. We had 895 patients enrolled in a one-year period. 17.4% of them were, were known to be HIV positive. And it's notable that 46.5%, so a large portion, were actually obese, which is quite a contrast to Mueso. It's a broader NCD program, so people were treated for hypertension um, diabetes and chronic respiratory disease with hypertension, the main diagnosis at enrollment. And it's notable also that 28.5% of the cohort had two or more of the target NCDs, not including HIV. So we looked at some indicators of um, clinical quality and some clinical outcomes. So among the hypertensive patients, almost all had had a blood pressure check performed at their last visit, and of those, almost two-thirds were at target. And then we looked at type 2 diabetics, and again, most of them had had their blood sugar checked at their last visit, and about two-thirds were at target. And those, those are actually very good results in terms of, of, blood, of uh, disease control compared to the data that's available for, for the region on NCDs. So um, lots in this slide, but basically a convenient sample of patients were surveyed as they exited the pharmacy. Um, 85 patients took part. They were strong at being able to name their NCD diagnosis and name a selected drug and its indication, but they were less good at being able to explain the detail of their diagnosis and particularly to link lifestyle advice and behaviour change with, um, with disease prevention and disease control. And also the team looked at some of the predictors of, of achieving control amongst the population. So in hypertensive patients, there was a weak association between being obese and being HIV positive with having uncontrolled blood pressure. Um, and in the type 2 diabetic patients, we didn't identify particular predictors in this cohort. So as I mentioned, we did um, costing analyses for each program from the provider perspective, and they were incremental costing analyses. So from Weso in 2015, annual costs were 32,000 international dollars. Per patient per year, this was 224 international dollars. In Matsapa for 2016, the per patient per year costs were almost double at 441. But to put this in context, there's some data from chronic HIV programs at primary care level um, from PEPFAR and others that shows that the cost per patient per year of delivering this care is between 208 and 642 international dollars. 
and it's higher in places like um, South Africa. Um, some lessons learned from the implementation of these two different programs. So in Weso, it was nurse-led diabetic care, um, and it was well integrated into an outpatient hospital setting. In Matsava, task shifting, sh shifting to nurses or task sharing to nurses did not actually occur as was intended. And we felt this was due to the complexity of the care, the lack of experience generally in providing this type of care, and regulatory barriers to nurses initiating and changing medications. So um, it is, uh, there are of course limitations to, to both studies, um, to both evaluations. They were small clinic-based cohorts with um, no control groups, and it's retrospective data with inevitable gaps. Um, our conclusion is fairly long, but it is that NCD care can be integrated into MSF-supported national health services, can achieve acceptable intermediate clinical outcomes, and this is at a cost that's similar to the delivery of HIV care at primary level. In terms of ne next steps, we did think that NCD care could be simplified for stable patients, and that lessons learned from HIV care could be integrated in into NCD care, for example, community adherence groups and lay counselling and, and support, and also that contingency planning is required to minimise treatment interruption for NCD care for um, patients in unstable settings. And again, lessons have been learned from HIV in this regard. So I'd like to thank everybody involved in the evaluations, especially the staff and the patients of both services in the DRC and in Swaziland. And thank you all very much for your attention.